Hi everybody. So every now and then an article will come out in the science press that well captures everybody's imagination and the latest one is SciTech Delhi. It came out on the 3rd or 4th of October so it's out like three four days old and it's about MIT. MIT and their concrete supercapacitor. What MIT did was take a bit of concrete, chuck some carbon in there and add some potassium chloride. Hey presto, they created a supercapacitor and that really has got people fired up because in the article what they talk about is well if that can happen then all we really have to do is get a huge load of concrete, stick some wires in and we're going to solve our energy storage problem. Now MIT say that that amount of concrete can store roughly 20 to 220 watt hours per cubic meter depending on the amount of carbon that you actually put in there. But the thing is, what does that actually mean? Well, a cubic meter weighs 2.4 tons and you need roughly 45 cubic meters to store 10 kilowatt hours, which is about five or six lorry loads of concrete, more or less your foundations, I would imagine. But that amount of energy is, well, peanuts really. I mean, mostly batteries and supercapacitors are reckoned in watt hours per kilo or farads per gram. Now, if you look at that, then the amount of watt hours per kilo that can be stored is pretty much ludicrous actually, because in terms of watt hours, it's um, 0.008 watt hours per kilo to 0.09 watt hours per kilo is what that concrete is able to actually store. That means you'd need about a thousand kilos of the stuff to store as much as you could in your average size family car lead acid battery. In terms of supercapacitors it just gets a bit more ludicrous because what they're storing is 0.06 farads per gram to 0.7 farads per gram. Now this one which is a pretty much standard supercapacitor from green cap weighs about 60 grams and stores about 500 farads is about 10 farads per gram, round about there. So this will store 20 times the amount, whereas a lead acid battery of course will store a thousand times the amount that the wonderful MIT supercapacitor is able to store. In fact if you look at that in terms of joules, you would get more energy stored if you picked up that cubic meter of concrete one meter and dropped it. That's because by lifting it at one meter and dropping it you'll get something like 23 million joules. But doing it as a supercapacitor you would best get something like 700,000 joules. So there's a lot more energy in dropping it. But if you suggest that people will come down on you like the ton of bricks. I know that because I've done videos suggesting that. But if you plug it in and charge it suddenly it becomes acceptable to store such a small amount of energy in that way. And I think that's because people really aren't thinking about what's involved in making something a supercapacitor. You can't just pour the concrete and stick a couple of wires in it. You need this structure. You need some current collectors to collect the current. You need to keep the positive and negative apart or all short circuit, so you need a separator. You need an electrolyte to carry the charges to the positive and the negative plate. And finally, you need the active material to hold their charges. And that active material in terms of MIT is the carbon added to the concrete. And the charges have to move from where they're stored to the current collector so they can get outside and do some work. In MIT the charges are stored in the concrete and they have to move through to the current collectors. That concrete is described as highly conductive. Well there's highly conductive and there's highly conductive. Carbon is nowhere near as conductive as copper and it actually has a pretty high resistance. So if you make that too thick the charges will be used up fighting against the resistance trying to get to the current collector and will never get there. So there is a minimum thickness and a maximum thickness that you can actually make that concrete layer. If you're adding more than the maximum then any charges there are going to be used up trying to get out and in fact you're just adding volume for no good reason because whatever's stored in there you'll never get to because it's used up trying to get out. 
But what that means is, if you want to make a concrete supercapacitor, then you have to pour your concrete in one inch slices. And between each of those slices, you either need a bit of metal or a bit of pepper. Now that doesn't seem an ideal way to build a building to me. If your foundation is made out of one inch slices separated by paper and copper sheet, I'm not sure that that would be a particularly good foundation. Equally, of course, that's a lot of effort in order to make a foundation out of poured concrete, I'm willing to bet it would push the price up unbelievably. Now, during the course of the paper, MIT discuss a couple of interesting things. The first thing is, if your concrete supercapacitor dries out, it stops working. So you have to keep it wet. Now, if your concrete is above ground, having it wet doesn't seem like a good idea to me. If it's below ground, then obviously keeping it wet is no real problem. But MIT also note that if the salt leaches out, it'll stop working. So the best answer, it would seem, is to put that concrete supercapacitor into a can. Something else they also note is as the ratio of carbon to concrete goes up, then the ability of the supercapacitor to store energy goes up by the same amount. So if you like, you can add more carbon or add less concrete and you'll get a better supercapacitor. So if you think about it, what MIT is saying is that the best concrete supercapacitor is a concrete supercapacitor without any concrete in it. And it's best to put it into a can, say something like this, and that would make an awesome concrete supercapacitor. So I'm not sure that the concrete supercapacitor is anything better than a, a good headline. I think the problems involved with actually bringing it to reality and whether it could actually be used in reality means we'll see no more of this than a tech stream news item, pretty much in the same way that brick supercapacitors were a couple of years ago. Anyway, I was asked to discuss concrete supercapacitors. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it made you think a bit more about them. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.